What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to another video. Um, this is gonna be a pretty chilled back, relaxed video like we used to do back in the day, back in my university days. That, that was a really good period for me in terms of my YouTube career. But instead of having constant, highly edited, like 30 minute long YouTube videos, I kind of want to do things in between, of course, so that you get enough content to, to go to get along. And so I think we're going to just start doing some more chilled out kind of videos, just like this one, um, where we look at smaller things in Five Nights at Freddy's that uh, are, I would say is equally as important because as well as like looking backwards in, in like the past games and stuff in my theory videos, we also need to look forward. And there is a lot going on this year um, that I haven't really touched on at all. Of course, we have the Into the Pit game coming up for the 10th anniversary of Five Nights at Freddy's. That's right, 10 years. That is, that blows my mind, to be honest. And there's also something going on with Click Team at the moment. They're, 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 they're putting out loads of weird Five Nights at Freddy's posts of like, like teasing a new game or something. So there's that coming on, along as well. But then, very, very recently, we had a new announcement of a new FNAF book. Yes, I have more content to make. Yeah, uh, I, I would say if I'm... If, if you can, like, organize different FNAF YouTubers into different categories, I'm definitely one of those FNAF book guys. But I am so excited that there is going to be new books going forward. Like, I, I'm glad that it doesn't stop there. Because, sure, I think Tales on the Pizza Plex, Fazbear Frights, they were pretty long series, right? They, they went on for multiple years and people got very tired of just book after book after book. We need something new and thankfully we have something new because this isn't just a regular novel. This is an interactive novel and, and by that I believe it's like a choose your own adventure. So let's have a look at the description for this book and of course the cover. The cover looks sick. So it's called Five Nights at Freddy's, an interactive novel, the week before. Uh, and it's by Scott Cawthon and E.C. Myers. And I can't help but notice that this is volume one. It doesn't say that on the cover. It doesn't say that on the cover at all. But it does say that on the store page, right? It says volume one. And um, that could potentially mean we are going to get a series of interactive novels and I'm gonna cry to be honest. I'm thinking when I do inevitably make audiobooks for these books, um, how am I gonna do them if it's choose your own adventure? Because I guess I could choose my own adventure and then I'll have to go through every other ending. I don't really know how I'm gonna do it, but um, we'll figure that out when we get to it. Let's read the description. Just in time for the 10th anniversary of Five Nights at Freddy's, return to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza in this interactive novel in which you decide what happens. That is so, so sick. It also appears to be another 10th anniversary product. So we have Into the Pit coming out for the 10th anniversary. We have this book coming out for the 10th anniversary. What else is there gonna be? I'm I'm really, really curious to to for, for the 10th anniversary to come and like what what is gonna happen? I feel like it's gonna have to be big We know Scott Cawthon. Scott Cawthon used to do big things for each anniversary But then he retired and so for the past like two three years we haven't really had anything But uh, this is the 10th anniversary, so it could be pretty big return to where it all began in this interactive prequel to the very first Five Nights at Freddy's game. You, the reader, are the security guard and you've got five nights, or is it six, to survive Freddy, Chica, Bonnie and Foxy as they try, tr try, try to wipe you out. With over 25 different possible endings and two difficulty settings, this one-of-a-kind innovative novel is a uniquely entertaining experience for any Freddy fan. <laughs> Perfect description, right? It sets the scene, we are here, prequel to Five Nights at Freddy's 1 the week before, as the title suggests. We'll talk about that a little bit in a second. It tells you what is going to be going on in this book. 25 different endings. What? And it kind of gives you a synopsis of, of what the story is going to be about. It's going to be about a security guard. Okay, people are going to hate me when I say this, but this is almost fan service, I think, right? 
I mean, I would even say Into the Pit, the game is fan service because like we we need more book stuff <laughs> going on in the games. Like we, we need games that are based on the books. We need more kind of interaction to show that they are connected. And so I'm really glad that they're doing that. And I feel like it's kind of fan service. And I feel like this is definitely fan service because we're returning to the very first game, you know, no remnant, no sister location, no security breach, no nothing like the mimic or anything like that. We're going back to the root of the series. And that is that that's really exciting to be honest. I think people are going to really enjoy this book actually because I, I feel like I feel like it kind of goes back to like the Silver Eyes. The Silver Eyes is like the FNAF book, right? I I, I think the Silver Eyes when it came out was like, damn, this, this this just encapsulates FNAF really well in kind of a, like a novel style, and I feel like this could potentially this could have the potential to do the same. But of course, this one's gonna be very, very different because we have different routes to go down, different endings. And I feel like that kind of innovative product is going to be really, really appealing to some people. It's appealing to me. Like, like I really love the FNAF books, but I have to admit it gets tiring when it's just story after story after story, just one linear plot, right? I want to make some choices. And it seems like if this is the very first one, this is going to be sort of just like the original game just packed into one book. You make the choices. So like, okay, Foxy's, you, you hear Foxy running down the corridor, what do you do? Uh, and then it gives you the choice. You can shut the door. And then if you shut the door, you go to this page and then you carry on reading and wow, you survived. <laughs> Obviously it's not gonna be that simple. I feel like this could, be really, really cool, but also quite convoluted. <laughs> I'm just trying to think, 25 different possible endings. Obviously that's not gonna be, you died, you survived, right? Maybe it's gonna be like, you died to Chica on night one, you died to Bonnie on night four, blah, 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 blah. It could be multiple endings like that, but also there is the potential for like, secret endings, like the, you took the perfect route, you survived all five or six nights as it implies, or there could be like a silly ending, or it could be like you found Springtrap in the safe room. Like it genuinely could be anything. But I do want to talk about the lore implications because of course this has huge potential to be canon to the game's timeline. Of course, whenever a new book or a new book series rolls out, everybody Everybody questions the canonicity of it, right? But I think at this point, I think at this point you have to accept that they're writing stuff for the game's timeline, especially when it when it points out specifically Return to Where It All Began in its interactive prequel to the very first Five Nights at Freddy's game. This is 100% in the timeline and it is a prequel. So speaking of that, this is called The Week Before. And uh, that should probably ring some alarm bells if you've ever played the, the first Five Nights at Freddy's game. That there's this guy called Phone Guy. Well, we don't know what his name is, but <laughs> Phone Guy, right? Phone Guy is in Five Nights at Freddy's. Phone Guy was the guy who came before you. So like, if you think about the FNAF movie, for example, we had the original security guard who came before Mike and we saw him get killed by that weird Freddy torture machine, whatever that thing was. I have a feeling we are going to see similar events in this book. Maybe there is there is one ending where you crawl through the vent or you do the exact same thing as the movie or something like that, that would be really cool. But we are definitely playing as Phone Guy in this book, which is really exciting because I, I think Phone Guy is quite underexplored as a character and he seems to know a lot about the company um, and so I, it'll be really cool to to kind of see things from a fresh set of eyes. It will also be really cool to experience the differences between playing as Mike and playing as Phone Guy. And what I mean by that is, for example, if Golden Freddy appears in this book, that's very strange to me because I feel like his whole it's me thing was very personal to Mike, as in it could have been the bite victim saying it's me to Michael. Um, so I don't know. I, <laughs> I am a bit scared if, if Golden Freddy appears in this book, but I, I guess like the, the whole it's me thing is like, it's just a common trope at this point. It doesn't mean anything 
in particular, it's just it's me, Goblin Freddy. Um, but I think it's going to be very interesting to see if there are differences or even, even if there are similarities to the FNAF 1 location in the book. I sort of wonder how they're going to deviate from the original game um, in, in this sort of new, new form of media, you know? Okay, so I, I'm going to have a look and see on Twitter what other people are saying about this because obviously it, it is popping off like crazy right now. Everybody is going wild about it. First of all, by Entom. So Entom checked EC Meyer's Twitter account, which is the person who wrote this book, author, the author of the book, along with Scott Cawthon, and they are being followed by Mega Cat Studios. So here's the thing, right? I, I don't know if this is like something big to connect. Like I don't know if there's a, like a huge conspiracy going on with like are all of these different game developers and authors like are, are they? writing parallel to to one another so that they can like sync up because if you think about it into the pit is of course a story where you time travel or you don't actually time travel with it's, it's the effects of agony or whatever but we do time travel so maybe maybe there will be connections here and also don't forget that in the new into the pit game there are going to be multiple endings as well so that is a strange connection, how we have a new game and a new book with loads of different endings. And uh, I'm, I'm quite excited to see whether there is going to be crossover there. Also good to note, of course, Into the Pit is about the original Missing Children's incident. So I don't know, there, there could be a connection there as well. And then we also have DJ Aiden, who's looking closer at the cover for the week before and has noticed some strange things. So I took a closer look at the cover for FNAF the week before and I don't think this image is taking place in the restaurant. It might be a house. There's a beer bottle, shattered glass, and a wooden railing that's possibly for the stairs. I find that to be very interesting. I did notice the bottle, right? I, I noticed the bottle and that is strange. I guess you could probably say that's still a part of, of Freddy Fazbear's pizza, but like, Again, that, that's that's where like it, it deviates from the games. And just because there's deviations, like that, that doesn't mean the canonicity is all thrown out the window. Um, there can be a, a shattered bottle on the on the floor in the book that isn't in the game, and, and it doesn't mean that they're two different timelines. Like obviously there's gonna be some things that um that, that have changed and of course it's been 10 years since the first game came out so maybe they want to refresh it a little bit maybe that's even why they're doing this they they kind of want to reboot it or or retell the story of FNAF 1 in in a way maybe this will help us to to understand the animatronics better or the souls better or what just what's going on in general <laughs> maybe even like timeline placements like like follow me for example when does that take place? A lot of people say that it takes place after FNAF 1, but if we come across like a sealed off safe room in <laughs> in the FNAF 1 location, then uh, I'm gonna have a lot of questions. I don't really think that's possible anyway because you know, the, the animatronics are fully constructed still. And then we do have, yeah, the, the railing. I do see the railing, so... I don't know, yeah, maybe it isn't all in the pizzeria. And that's very interesting because that would mean that there's a lot of variation between the endings, which is something that I really, really want in this book. I don't want a whole book where ending one is where you uh, you get killed by Bonnie in night one. I don't want ending two to be you get killed by Foxy in night two. I don't want it all to just be the same, like you die 24 times and you are successful one time. Um, I, I, I want it to be I, I want it to be more varied and I want big secrets and like lore to come out of this. <laughs> of course I do. We also see a hand in the back with a watch on. That's definitely going to be the security guard that we're playing as. I think it's I think it's um I think it's good to note that we know what the canon ending is, okay? There are 25 endings here, but not all of them can be canon. The canon ending is phone if we are playing as phone guy phone guy dies on night four and technically it's still a mystery as to who who killed him maybe we'll get some insight into that 
in this book. Um, whether you believe it's Freddy or Foxy or Golden Freddy, like, it could be any of them. But we know that he dies on night four. So, because there is a night six option, we know that there are going to be a lot of non-canon uh, endings to this. And it's going to be interesting to see what could have happened in the timeline and maybe what they even tell us about the universe and like the storytelling and the people of the story. That's all I've got for now. Um, that is a very interesting release, right? I, I think this is going to be pivotal uh, this year. I think it's going to be a really, really cool book to read. So make sure that you subscribe so that when it comes out, I will be sharing some more news and some theories and of course, audiobooks. I, I still have to figure out how I'm gonna do that, but I I'll, I'll make it work. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video. Goodbye.